Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball video for you this evening. We've been working on this Gottlieb Amazing Spider-Man pinball machine, and we finally finished it up, so we figured we would film a video of us actually playing it so you could see what it's all like. What do you think about that? So if you didn't see our other videos, we did one on the back glass, we did one on the playfield, and we did one on... Uh, I can't remember what we did on the first one. I guess we cleaned up some stuff. But uh, we did three full videos before this. So this is number four. If you're missing the other ones, you might want to go back. Go back. You've gone too far. So this came out in 1980. And was the second game released for Gottlieb's System 80 uh, board set. Before this, they had the System 1. This was a System 80, which came out in 80. So this was a little before Haunted House and Black Hole and some of those. So uh, if you've played those, it was the same kind of board set. This is a wide body, a little bit bigger than normal. And they have packed every little inch of it with artwork from the Spider-Man comic books. Look at that back glass. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's a replacement back glass we ordered from Shea Arcade Group. Very cool. I love it. Our second display is still a little bit dim. We're letting the thing uh, warm itself up. So we've been leaving it on. And we've left it on for probably a total of 20 hours. And it's not quite as bright as the other ones yet. But whenever we started, you could barely see it. <laughs> so it's getting there. I know you can zap it, but I'm, I'm testing it, folks. I'm trying to see if it'll just do it on its own. I think it might. But check this out. If you're into comic books, this is very, very cool, right? Like I said, it came out in 1980. I was into comic books back in the day, but I, didn't, I never read Spider-Man. I always read Superman and Batman. But, uh... This is straight out of late 70s, early 80s comic book artwork. Whoever they got to do the playfield must have been pretty great. Let's see. I wonder if it was a famous one of the artists from the uh, books. That would be interesting to figure out. So it says, Spider-Man and the distinctive likenesses thereof is a trademark of the Marvel Comics group and is used with permission. Copyright 1980. Marvel Comics Group, a division of Cadence Industries Corporation, all rights reserved. And if you look right here, there is this little Spider-Man face, and look, there's a little trademark signal next to it, silk screened onto the plane. <laughs> kind of cool. So there are a bunch of characters on the playfield that I don't know who they are, because I never read Spider-Man comic books. I've seen the movies, but... So this is obviously Mary Jane, right? Is that her name? I believe. I cannot remember who that is. Why am mm, why am I thinking Frank something? I might be hmm, I might have that wrong. And uh that's I need to I need to rewatch the movie at least so I can remember. I think that's his aunt. Am I right about that? Sorry, Spider-Man fans. I'm not trying to butcher this. Is that the Kingpin? Do I have that one right? The lizard guy, who's a scientist. I don't know who that is. I have no clue who this guy is. I have never seen that guy before in my life. This guy I've seen before, but I don't know his name. This is my favorite Spider-Man picture on it. I just like the way they've got him with his doing the thing. It's like he's about to he's about to hit you with it. <laughs> right? So there are there are all these little Spider-Man all over the place. So here's one where he's swinging at you. Here's one where he's crawling down the end lane. And then over here you got the same thing but it's like a mirror. There is a cityscape here down below the flippers. We're arguing about whether or not the left flipper is crooked. I haven't I haven't decided yet. See like it's 
This one, these two are lined up with the end lane, so the ball rolls right onto the flippers. And this one is too, right? But they're the 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 wires are at different things, right? So I think that's right. I like it when it rolls right on. It could be down a little bit to match that one, but then it would roll down onto the flipper. I don't know. I guess it's personal preference. Easy to fix if you don't like it like that. Uh, so it has this little cityscape in the background. has this huge Spider-Man drawing over here. Now let me show you some of the attention to detail that they did. If you look at it from directly above, he is holding his web in his hand. It continues onto the plastic and then back onto the play field. Right? And then over here, He's shooting out a new one. And look how three-dimensional they made all this look. He's shooting out a new one. It goes over the plastic and continues on the play field. Just little things like that to make it consistent, people. It has the cool spinner shot. I'll show you that. So, you know, they put two things on the spinner so that when the ball goes through it does like the old flip book thing <laughs> the drop targets all have these little webs on them two of these have been replaced by somebody that put red ones on but we left it no big deal stand up switch there stand up switch there and then of course the pop bumper caps also have Spidey's face on it. What do you think about that? So this back glass is fantastic. We did a whole video just on the back glass. Um, this is a reproduction made by the Shea Arcade Group and it uh, they have uh, done a heck of a job. It's almost identical to the original. The colors, a couple of the colors if you wanted to complain, you could complain are slightly different than the original, but all of the artwork and the line art is pretty freaking close. So this is a pretty fair representation of the original one. So you've got the same thing. You've got this very, you know, in comic books, a lot of times, what I've noticed at least in, in your in your classic ones. So I, I am not an artist, right? But in your classics like Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, the X-Men, um, but especially Spider-Man, and you saw it a lot in Batman, too. They would do a lot of things where there's buildings and stuff in the background. And if you look, it's got a really interesting kind of angle to everything. And they do that a lot in comic books. So down here, they've drawn it where it's just kind of, you know, you're looking at a kind of a three-quarter view of the city, but everything's straight and everything. But that's not how Spider-Man was. He was always swinging and... You know, and so Batman did similar things. He was always jumping and using his grappling hook and jumping off the top of a building and all kinds of crazy crap. So if you look at the way that they did the composition of the back glass, there's this building over here, and everything is tilted because you're Spider-Man. You're swinging somewhere, right? So he's front and center of the of the frame. Like if it's, if this was a uh, you know, a cover of a book, or it maybe it is, by the way. This may be the cover of a book that they've released. But um, if you look, it's all tilted. He's really more like that, <laughs> right? Or something like that. Maybe something like that. So the perspective is always at an angle, and you see that in a lot of that era of comic books. Maybe they still do that a lot too. But So everything's tilted slightly. You've got a building over here and the green goblin, goblin is flying by on his glider. Oh, and I was noticing this, is, and again this is a detail that's pretty much on the original glass too. There's these little stars. There's just a lot going on. Look, they're all around them. Did he have some kind of magic that he did?
right? And then you can see the city off there behind them. And I think this is Doc Ock, isn't it? Doc Octopus. Do I have that right? It kind of looks like Elton John a little bit. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, Elton John's the man. Got another trademark logo. <laughs> I wonder if they put that by all of the characters. Yeah, they did. Little trademark logo. All right, so I'm going to turn it sideways so we can read this trademark logo here. Spider-Man and the distinctive likeness thereof is a trademark of the Marvel Comics Group and is used with permission. Copyright 1980, Marvel Comics Group, a division of Cadence Industries Corporation, all rights reserved. So they don't name any of the uh, people for me. They won't help me out. So you've got him... And then you've got these little spideys that are laying over all of the score windows. And they all four of them are the same. There's that one, that one. There's two over there. And so you've got this guy. You know, I would say that's Hawkman, but I think Hawkman was DC, wasn't it? They're blowing me up on the phone, people. So you got this guy, but look, he's got a little trademark logo next to him. So it must be somebody y'all all know who he is. And then you've got this girl up here. I have no clue who that is. It's probably obvious to Spider-Man fans. Same thing, trademark. So I need to brush up on my Spidey skills. But what an iconic look to that back glass. Doesn't that just look awesome? Mm, mm, mm. Spider-Man is such a big uh, thing that, you know, just the logo is iconic. Just that. That's a big deal. That the Amazing Spider-Man logo, you know, I mean, that's, that's a big deal. So the back glass looks fantastic. Really makes the game. And then uh, the, the artwork has the similar logo on the side. Same thing, little city with the head, the mask. And I was going to, I mentioned on the uh, one of the other videos, this is an interesting thing because back in the day, these uh, pinball manufacturers, they had this little process that they did where they painted uh, the cabinets and they would, they would uh, paint them one color and then stencil on the color on it. And that's how they've done this one. But the, the companies did different things. So let me show you this Williams over here. So this is a Williams Jubilee that we got in, right? And so you see that they've done that. So it was all like white originally. It's yellowed by now, but it was white. And then they stenciled these figures on when it's a two color stencil. So they would hold up a big board uh, and then spray it with the blue. And then it would go down the line and they'd hold up another big board and they'd spray it with the orange, right? And you can actually see the overspray. So see the blue overspray? It's not perfect. So they would hold up a board. It would have holes in it. And they'd, they'd stenciled it real quick and dirty. And whoever's job that was probably could do one in three minutes. Right? But before they did that, they painted it all one color. And they were just using plywood to make these things. So it wasn't like high-end furniture or anything. So to hide all of the little discrepancies in the paint, they would put what they called splatter paint on it. So it's white, it's yellowed, but hear me out, it's white. Um, and then the plywood had little problems in it. Like see the lines there, the little cracks and stuff. So it's, it's plywood, it's not perfect. So they would paint it with what they called splatter paint. So whenever, after they painted it white, somebody had a, had a paint gun with the nozzle adjusted in such a way that it just spit paint out. And they would just <laughs> and spit paint all over it. So see all these little gray dots? That's factory. That came from the factory like that. And a lot of the a lot of the pinball machines were like that. And then also the uh, some of the arcade games were too. Pac-Man, for instance, was like that. They call it splatter paint. And the reason that they do that is because it plays a little trick on your eye to where it hides imperfections. So you don't notice this as much because you're seeing all the little dots. And it's just a little trick. It, if they painted it just white, 
and then stenciled it on it, you'd see if there was one little spot right there, you'd see it. Right? But since they did the splatter paint, it kind of hides it and it makes it, it makes for a nicer product. If I had one here that's repainted, I don't know if that one's been repainted. Have any of these? None of these have been repainted. But if you ever look at one that has been repainted, you can see the deal. Oh, you know what? There is one in the back. Let's walk way to the back, people. Come with me to make a point. Let me turn on the lights so you can see it. So we have this machine here that someone did repaint. So this is a Gottlieb Swing Along. We'll be fixing this in the future. And someone has repainted it. Now, looks pretty nice, right? But when you get up to it, and I'm not knocking whoever repainted this, it was probably in really bad shape. You get up to it, of course they didn't do a great job on that, but see how it's all one color? I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but you can see every little problem with it. There's dents there, there's a mark there, 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 there. There's all kinds of little issues. So if it's one color, it just looks like crap. You can see every little problem. So they did that splatter paint to fight that. Here's a Pac-Man. I'll show you on a Pac-Man. So this is the original paint. It's a little worn there, but... You think it's a yellow cabinet, but if you look real close, there are little blue dots all over the cabinet. And that splatter paint just hides some of the imperfections, and it's like that from the factory. Okay? So... All, I'm telling you all this just to make one little teeny tiny point. <laughs> so Gottlieb did that as well, but they didn't use splatter paint. Theirs was called webbing. Right? So this is a Gottlieb masquerade that we're working on. So look how they did theirs. It wasn't little dots, it was like a web. And this, this is a much older machine. This has, you know. So you see where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> so this is a Gottlieb Amazing Spider-Man with web stenciled on it. But the artwork has their old school webbing on it. I mean, the you know, the, the cabinet. And so this thing looks really nice, but really it's the webbing <laughs> makes it look really nice. It hides all the little all the little problems in the wood and just makes it look really nice. So I always thought that was kind of weird or kind of I don't know if it would be ironic. It's kind of interesting that they were the ones that did the web paint and they were the ones that ended up doing the Spider-Man machine. Where'd our five minutes go? All right, so let's read the instructions because you know what? If you read the instructions, it makes every game more fun. This says five balls per player. You know what? I set it on three ball. So it is no longer five balls. It's three ball. <laughs> so let's flip that over. Hold a minute while I straighten this out. Three balls per player. Instructions. Completing the one, two, three sequence. Light scores bonus. Adds one lit spot to the right drop targets and resets the one, two, three sequence. So the one, two, three sequence are these three kick out holes. Right? So whenever you complete that, it does the scores bonus when lit, I believe it said. Light scores bonus. Adds one lit spot to the right drop target. Bloop. And it resets the one, two, three sequence. Completing the A and B rollovers. Light the right extra ball feature when adjacent spot is lit. 
completing the A and B rollovers, light the right extra ball feature when adjacent spot is lit. There's the A and B rollovers, but these are also the A and B rollovers. Light the completing A and B rollovers, light the right extra ball feature. Where's the right extra ball feature? This pinball is so big. I do not see an extra. Oh, here we go. Right extra ball. Lights the right extra ball feature when adjacent spot is lit. Okay. So whenever one of those green lights is lit, if you hit that drop target, you get the extra ball. Uh, the pop bumpers move the lit spots. Okay, so as you hit the pop bumpers, that light dances around. All drop targets score 3,000 points. Completing the right drop targets lights the left extra ball feature, the spin target, and resets both target banks. So whenever you complete all of those at right, it lights this one, extra ball when lit. The spin target, 1,000 when lit, and resets both target banks. Okay. Pop bumpers and spin targets score 100 or 1,000 when lit. Tilt does not disqualify a player. Matching the last two numbers and score to number that appears on back glass after game is over scores one replay. All right, folks, so I'll put the glass on it and we're going to play it. The reason I thought play it with the glass on it is because these things are no fun to play with the glass on. That's just the truth. They don't sound right. It sounds like you're breaking stuff. And just try it sometime. Take the glass off and play it. Sucks. So uh, I'll put the glass on it. We'll play it a little bit and see if it's as fun as it looks. Okay, folks, so one of the things that's been bothering me is the flipper has been sticking like halfway up. So like it goes all the way up and then it'll come down and it doesn't come all the way down. And I fixed that in the past, but since I've never done one of these System 80s with that problem, I figured I would call in an expert that I've seen fix like everything. I mean, this guy, he can fix dilapidated trailers, old buildings, uh, trailer, uh, uh, hay trailers. By trailer, I meant mobile, home, mobile homes, uh, uh, trucks, cars. So we called in the expert. Here, I'll show you who it is just by his vehicle. You might know... Uh, you might know just by his, his truck. <laughs> so I've called in to fix my flipper. My brother Donnie. <laughs> Me in the flesh. All right, so Donnie, you think you can fix this? So this flipper is sticking. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. So what are you going to, how, how, how are you going to, what do you think first? I think I'm going to check the, the voltage here with this thing. Uh-huh. You know. Don't, don't we have a test light or something? I mean, I'm, I'm not used to this high quality stuff, but I'll get it done with this. Okay. Okay. And now. Don't use that. All right. It's sticking. This here. You a see, hammer. You see how my. Yeah. It's bent just perfect. I can pry on it and do what I need to get do. Get it where it's more smooth. Yep. Yeah, get it. Okay. Get that out. The get hammer. And then okay. if the, the plunger. It might be a little too long. So. I didn't think about that. It might be that the plunger is too long. Yep, I'm going to cut it so off. So the hacksaw might do it. And then, if the flipper's got to come off, I've got me a uh, puller here. We'll pull it out. Isn't that for car, that's for car well, trucks? I'll just put though? a couple of screws in it. It don't matter. I mean, it'll pull anything. Okay. But I think it'll work. How long do you think it'll take? Uh, just a few minutes. Just give me a little bit of time. All right, I'm going to go get you some money. Let me go grab my wallet. Okay. All right, back. Did you get it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This time. This time. I got it. Already? Working. Yeah, it's working. All right, show me. There, the ball come out. Yeah, I had that. I'm talking about the flipper. Oh, that. Okay. Let's see here.
Yeah, you got it. No, you have to hit the button for, see look, there's a button on the side. Oh, well the ball didn't get over there where I hit it. Uh, damn. Hey, wait a minute. I'll yeah. be damned, you actually fixed it. I fixed it. I told you I would. What in the hell? He can fix anything. So what did you, what, you, you literally used the harmonic balance puller? Oh yeah, I used it, I used it at the end. You see that little point there? See how it's, see there? Yeah. I just, you know, I had to tap on a little bit with that one, but it worked. Okay, now if people would like to see you fix other things, where would they, where would they go to, to see that? Go over to my brother Donnie, my channel, and I'll show you how to fix all kinds of stuff with a hammer. And a hacksaw. I fixed so much for so long with so little. I can now fix anything with nothing. This one actually lights up pretty bright, doesn't it? All right, so let's play it a little bit. I'll tell you the score as we go along. I've got it set on three ball. If you don't like that, you could set yours on five ball. So let's try it out. I'm almost, uh, uh, all the ones I've been doing lately have like a background sound. This one doesn't have one. So I'm always almost a little bit uh, put off by it not going the whole time it's playing. <laughs> Look at that. Donnie fixed that flipper real good. Oh no. Okay, so that one went quick. We're just getting started, people. We're learning. I've had a lot of people say that they really like the chimes on some of these early solid states. Uh, this one obviously is an electronic soundboard. My personal opinion on that stuff is I like it however they came out. Like if it came out with chimes, I think that's cool. Let's get it where it sounds like it did originally. If it came out with the early soundboards, that's cool too. Let's get it how it sounded originally. I got 65,000 points. That's pathetic. That is so pathetic. Now the um, I've been playing it a little bit, and what I, you know, whenever we've been testing it, and one thing that I've noticed is that some of the some of the switches, like uh, for instance, this one, and this one, and this one, and these two. They don't hardly ever get hit. Even if the ball hits them, it doesn't really trigger the switch because you can put a bigger ring on it to make it to make it more loose, and you can adjust the switch in to make it uh, to make it easier to hit. But it's just the the place that they're at. Like the ball doesn't really hit them; it just kind of rubs up against them. So you don't you don't really have a situation where the ball. You would think that pop bumper would throw it right into that, but if you look, even if it did, it would hit it at a glancing kind of blow. So there's never really a time that the ball hits this very hard to, to trigger the switch. And then up there is the same. A lot of times the ball comes down this path, but it never really hits that hard enough that it ever triggers it. So there's several switches that are like that. Even this one over here. So it's right beside a, a uh, saucer. So there's three, sa there's three kick out holes. So the ball never really hits that area. If it kicks off the pop bumper, usually it goes in the saucer. So there are several switches on the play field that the ball never really hits hard enough to trigger. Which I guess is part of being like a wide body. There's just so much space. and On a wide body, the ball moves a little slower. Ooh, about lost it. All right. Oh, no. What, uh, what should we be shooting at, people? How, how should we make our points? I guess I should look at the rules again. Oh, 
Not enough, not enough. Let's try it again. That rollover up there, I need to look at it a little bit. Ah, come on. All right, once again, I got 65,000 points. <laughs> We gotta do better than that, people. Come on now. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? I need to get it back together. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Can we hit something? Ooh, suck a shot off the off the middle rubber target right all the way at the top. Mm, this is the worst game yet. I mean the worst quarter yet. Let's say it that way. Look at that. See what I'm saying? It doesn't really hit it with enough force to to score. didn't get 65 at least that time. There is kind of a cool shot. middle shot you got to watch mm. Mm, 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 mm. we're getting there though we're getting a little better there is a really cool shot from this flipper over here through this flipper and around and then back it's kind of cool because it's this short little turnaround Have to start bumping it. I might have to bump it a little bit. Oh, what an unfortunate bounce. So that time I got 64,700 points. Can you believe this? The uh, I think the replay is at 120. <laughs> oh, come on. You gotta watch it off that top corner over there. There we go, that's a little better. Mmm. Man, you can definitely lose it through those center flippers. the saucer. Popcorn. Oh, roll past the saucer again. Uh, 
All right. Yeah, that one sucked too. I won't say the score. From now on, we only mention scores above 65. That's my world record. I played it a lot better with the glass off. fast for me. Alright, I got 62,000 on the first ball that time. That's not bad. We're getting better, people. Let's hang in there. We'll figure it out. I like the sounds. I've seen a lot of games like that. They'll have just a little bit of a spot where it'll hook it just a little bit right down the middle. So like it did it here, and it did it over there earlier. It'll just move it just a little bit. It's almost like they put that damn ring right in the way where it'll do that on purpose. Like, like right there, did you see it? It wasn't quite the same, but you saw how it was trying to go right down the middle. That was a nice little shot. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you heard that. That was our free game. You can almost uh, cradle the ball with the left upper flipper. That was awesome. Oh. All right. So I did a little better that time. I got 191,000. We're getting there, people. But you know what? We still haven't put it through all of its things. Let's try it some more. So, um, I should mention again. If you do all three of these, it lights up this wind lit. And then if you land in the middle one again, it lets you collect the bonus that you've built up in the middle of the ball. Which is always, you know, what you're looking for. Because if you can only collect the bonus at the end of the ball, you have to lose the ball to get the bonus, but if you can collect it in the middle of the ball, it's better. I was talking with somebody about that, though. If you've maxed out your bonus, that's effective. But if you don't have a very high bonus, if you collect it in the middle of the ball, all you're going to do is just keep building it back up again. And if you never build it all the way back up to 20000 really it didn't help you to collect it in the middle of the thing. Because if the two together don't add up to more than twenty you didn't really get any extra points. But, hey, what do I know? That, that upper left flipper actually is pretty good because you can do a lot with it. Ooh, did you see the English on that thing? Hmm. 
So yeah, that upper left flipper can bash the hell out of those, of course. But it can also, if you hit it just right, can skim these. So that's a, that's a drop target basher. Now we have a conundrum. What do you think? If I, if I hold it all the way open, it's definitely going to roll between. <laughs> but if I just barely hit it, it might pop it out of there. Mm, I think it's worse now. <laughs> oh no, people! I think it's slowly moving. I think it's slowly moving, or I'm tripping. Am I tripping? I might be tripping. Ain't nobody got time for that! All right. Can you believe that crap? I mean, what kind of shady... After I had that first ball, it was great. Oh, come on. Did you hear that? That's it giving me 2,000 points. Pathetic. Yeah, let's get a little left flipper action in here. Oh, look at that. So that's another interesting thing. bounce hmm. okay so not another thing I just noticed if the ball comes down here and comes off the left side of this it kind of bounces it around and makes it it feeds it to this flipper it makes it where it's basically just dropping it right on this flipper for you that's a nice little design. I guess I shouldn't be, I'm over plunging it. I should be trying to hit the three saucers instead of the, uh, the A and the B. See, it just fed it to the flipper. It's, it's almost like an in lane for the top left flipper. One twenty-seven. We're getting a little better. We're getting the kinks worked out. Yeah. So they like they kind of look random when you first start playing them, or you see things and you're like, ah, why'd they do that? They shouldn't have done that. But then you see little stuff like that, like that just dribbles the ball out right on the flipper. Perfect shot, just like the in lanes do on the bottom. You know. Cool. Oh yeah, I was gonna try to not plunge it so hard, so it lands over there. Well. Oh.
Okay, so I think I'm going to try to keep beating up the right drop targets. I haven't really completed those yet, I don't think. Oh, damn it. Forgot about the plunge again. Uh oh. Nope, not quite enough. Too loose with it there. <laughs> oh, missed it. It did advance the multiplier for me, so that's good. All right, I got 120,000 on ball two, but now we're on ball three. Ah, did it again. There we go, back over there. Nope, missed it. Whoa, in through the outdoor. She came in through the bathroom window. Oh, come on. All right, 166. I'm telling you, though, it's starting to grow on me a little bit, people. Think about it. The people that dropped out after watching the first couple games, they were probably like, ah, it's a dog. It's a dog. Now I know not to get a spider, man. It's a dog. Did it again. I'm going to remember. Boy, my brother Donnie really fixed the hell out of that flipper, I got to tell you. With a harmonic balance puller. What the? How's that even possible? I should have let the camera on to see exactly how he did that. Drop all them targets. Uh-oh, uh-oh, looking good. Oh, so close. Mm. Come on now, come on. Come on now. We got to do better than, I did it again. We got to do better than that, people. Come on now. Look at that. You see how it just plays with me? Do you see, do you see what I'm saying now? It just plays with me. Oh, whoa. All right, that was 80,000. Let's play one more game, people. What do you think? One more. The camera might cut off. The battery's laughing at me. So I'll talk while I'm playing, okay? So if you like what you see, make sure to leave a comment below. Let us know what your opinion is. You can come by and see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina. We got a whole building full of arcade games usually that we're working on. And you can check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. Now if you can't come by and you don't want to buy something off the website, that's fine. Just subscribe to us here on YouTube. And when we get something in like this, we will film a fun little video of it for you. Hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to check out my brother Donnie's channel after he flick fixed the flipper for us. That was nice of him. I was just talking to him earlier about some other videos we're going to be shooting soon. Lots of cool stuff coming up. So check that out. And as always, 
We appreciate all of the people that have been clicking our Amazon link. That rocks. So there's a link down below to Amazon. If you click that, it gives us a little piece of money for everything that you purchase. You don't have to buy anything though that you don't you weren't already gonna buy. Seventy-seven thousand. <laughs> Let's keep playing. I'm gonna play till the battery dies. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Thank you, folks. What? Come on. Whoa, spinner. I've been ignoring the spinner. I like that upper left flipper. That thing is a... I think that might be the key to being a good player on this one. Oh, saved it. That was all skill, people. Oh, that one wasn't. Oh, not enough. Oh, I still didn't do the plunge thing. Oh, and I never made the weird shot backwards through the bathroom window over there above the left flipper. Oh, almost. <laughs> Oh, too much still. I'm getting better at it. At least it went over there. Hmm. It sticks out just enough to hit the ball. I gotta. I might have to make it put a smaller one on there or something. Can't keep having that. Oh, I did it again. Mm. All right, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Did you ever play this sucker back in the day? Were you the ones that wore the play field out a little bit that we paint, repainted? Hmm. There we go. It doesn't even help you, it's just a cool shot because it goes upside down. There we go. That's the way to go, people. A shorter plunge is better. Hmm.